My name is Jill Hagland. I'm Tweety Jill to many of you out there, and I welcome you to my home studio in Bradenton, Florida. It's a nice sunny summer day. I'm so looking forward to teaching you how to dye coffee takes, takes burlap, and trims. That's something I love to do. I do it about once a month. I'm going to show you exactly how I do it here in my home studio today. Here's the things, the exact things that you need to start first. Here's a stock pot full of warm water. I'd like a nice tall pot so I can get a lot done at one time. It's not boiling hot because we don't want to be hurt, <laughs> steam our fingers or hurt ourselves, so it doesn't need to be boiling. I took it from the stove when it was very, very warm and I set it in my sink. Here's the items that I like to coffee dye. I cut up old tablecloths, crocheted tablecloths. I'm sure you've all seen these at flea markets and garage sales. I love these. These are wonderful when they're coffee dyed or even left white. This is just a piece of one. Here's some trims. We all have a lot of different trims. The only type of fabric that really accepts the coffee dye well is something that's made out of a natural fiber. You can't coffee dye polyester. So this is a cotton type of a trim. You can also coffee dye burlap very well. I love burlap coffee dye. When it's all finished, it looks real funky and the edges are really neat after they get out of the dryer and it does this natural process in the dryer. Sometimes I use a darker type of burlap. Sometimes I use a lighter burlap. It doesn't matter. You'll see the different reactions to the colors when the process is complete. I also love, and I know you all do because everyone's always asking me about how to copy that takes. That's mainly what this video is about. We have a selection of tags in our card kits at this point in time, and we sell them by the thousands in a box. And this is a selection that we have right now online for a thousand minimum quantity per box. Now I'm going to show you how I do it. Here are the utensils I use. I like a long spoon for dissolving the coffee once I put it in the hot water. Keeps your fingers from being steamed. Same reason for the long tongs to lift the coffee tags out or fabric out when you're ready to strain it. I love using a colander. I have several colanders. I put the different size tags in. I coffee dye my tags one size at a time because I like to be able to store them in individual jars that are just that size of take. You'll see at the end it makes it really nice if you can just do one size at a time and dry them. You have them all in one area, you stick them in a jar, there they are a few use later. So I have several colanders here that I drain things in once I take them out of the water. They're ready for me. I have this one very nice colander that I actually put in the sink and I love it. It goes right into the sink. It fits right into most size of sinks. I got this at Bed Bath & Beyond. It's a fabulous calendar. We also need to have coffee. I buy any type of generic coffee. You do not have to buy a certain type. I used to love the vanilla roast because it smelled good and your artwork smelled good when it was done. But actually all coffee works and now I'm to the point where I just buy the most inexpensive coffee I can find and the biggest jar. Here's a measuring cup, optional. I always wear an apron, sometimes a full apron. As you can see, this one I've worn so much, it's, uh, I just coffee dyed it one day because I had so much coffee on it. So I'll put my apron on. As you can see, there's towels. Old, just pick up some towels, old towels that you have in the garage or whatever. Nice big sizes, several big towels. You're gonna need to strain and drain your coffee tags on once they come out of the colander. So let's get ready. Now I clean my work area so we can get started on the next section of the video. Exactly how to do the tags. When I do tags, I put them in the water one at a time, you'll notice. If you just dumped the tags into the coffee water, a big glob, that's what you're going to end up with is tags that are partially dyed on top or on the bottom. You separate them inside, they're not died correctly and you just have a mess, especially after spending your well-earned money on your takes. So when you see what I'm doing, it's for a purpose. First thing I'm going to do is add the coffee 
You probably use a lot more coffee than you've heard other people use. Part of it is because they don't want to wait. <laughs> if you have deep, strong coffee, you die really quickly. Here's my cup. In the stock pot about this size, I would add a very, very good amount of coffee. Got a cup here. My stock pot is about three-fourths full of water. Warm, very, very warm water. Too warm to put your hand in, but not boiling. The next step is just dissolve your coffee in the water. Now I'm seeing that's not even close to how strong I want it. And that's what you need to do. You might have a smaller pot, maybe a quart pot, and just look at it and see how strong you want it. As you can see in this jar about how much I've used, I would say I want at least probably twice to three times that much. Again, I'm going to check it. It's pretty good, but I'm still going to add a little bit more. Another half cup. I know some of you out there might go, she didn't need to put all that in. Maybe I didn't, but I like, I like a nice, strong, quickly done. I can go on to other things, so I'm putting another half a cup. Okay, my favorite tag, this one. Almost all of our stamps fit this tag, our TJ Design Stamp Collections. So this is, I love these tags. I truly, truly do. And all my girls that teach that I have uh, been working with love them. When I show up with these, I might as well be showing up with little diamond rings because they want coffee dyed tags, and that's the best present I can give them. Okay, here we go. We're getting started now. One at a time. Takes a few minutes, but it's worth it to do it the right way. Once you get several in there and you see they're starting to overlap each other, push them down with their tongs. So they're not sitting on top of each other and keeping the other one from getting dye on it. I'm going to fill this pot up so in a few more minutes you're going to see this full and I will probably use half of these tags. Okay, and I'm adding tags to my stock pot. Let's check them, see how they look. Hmm, they're getting there. I think I would like to add a little more water just because I want it done quicker. I mean, excuse me, a little more coffee. <laughs> a little more coffee because I want it done quicker. So I'm going to add a whole other cup. The reason I'm doing this most, the reason I'm doing this is to show you that you can add coffee later. This is how you do it. If you don't think they're dying quick enough or the coffee wasn't strong enough, just push the tanks to the side. Your water is very warm. It will melt the rest of the coffee easily. Okay. 